Hey, what's going on AP World Peeps? We have period one in 15 minutes or less, I'm hoping, and we will cover everything you need to know about period one to succeed in AP World. All right, let's start off with the Paleolithic era. This lasted from 2.6 million to 10,000 years ago, and it was when most humans were hunter-gatherers, and they hunted all sorts of animals, including these giant hard-shell animals pictured here. And these hunter-gatherers used a lot of different tools, such as knives, spears, bows and arrows, and probably most importantly, fire, which was used to not only keep warm, but used as a defense against animals and even used to clear lands and hunt animals. So what were societies like in these groups or bands? Well, men were often the hunters and women often gathered. They were egalitarian societies, meaning everyone was pretty much equal. Most live in, lived in bands of 25 to 50 people, and there were no chiefs or kings, so very small groups people lived in. However, these bands did exchange ideas, goods, and people with other neighboring bands. Now, jumping over to the Neolithic era. This is about 10,000 years ago when individuals began to domesticate plants and animals. And this led to permanent civilizations in places like Mesopotamia, the Nile River Valley, Sub-Saharan Africa, the Indus River Valley, Yellow River Valley, Papua New Guinea, Mesoamerica, and the Andes. Be able to identify each of these regions on a map. Now we're going to talk about pastoralists, very important people. These were groups of people that raised animals and moved from one grazing area to another. So these people were constantly on the move with animals. And you see this especially in Afro-Eurasia, that area in particular. So what was the impact on the environment? Well, grass was destroyed in certain areas due to the grazing. And pastoralists were agents of change and helped spread ideas and technology. This example of cultural diffusion. A lot of weapons and technology that we'll talk about were exchanged or brought about or shared due to pastoralists. So what are the impacts of the Neolithic Revolution and pastoralists? Well, we have an increase in food supply, which leads to more people. More people leads to specialization. Because there's so much food, people can now do jobs other than farming. And that specialization will lead to social classes, such as artisans, merchants, warriors, scribes, priests. So keep in mind, with more food, more people and more people are not farming and can thus do other jobs listed here. Pottery could store food and goods, and that allows for trade between different cultures. And wheels help to increase trade and transportation of goods. The pottery, the invention of pottery and the wheel is instrumental during this time. Patriarchal societies will develop. This is where men possessed authority over women. And as civilizations expanded, so did patriarchy. We'll see patriarchy established in most of these civilizations. So some specific early societies and civilizations you should be familiar with. In Mesopotamia, that's in modern day Iraq. That is a patriarchal society and kings were seen as divine. And this will be a theme that you should be very familiar with. A lot of these kings, these rulers, will be seen as divine or having God-given powers or being God themselves. Cuneiform was the writing system that was developed there. And the codes of Un-Namu and Hammurabi helped regulate life in this region. Over in Egypt, that is located along the Nile River Valley, which had annual flooding, which was very positive for farming. Pharaohs ruled, again, they claimed to be divine, and pyramids were built, which served as tombs for pharaohs. Hieroglyphics was their writing system in Egypt, and we can interpret it due to the Rosetta Stone, which allows historians to understand the hieroglyphic language. Over in Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa in the Indus River Valley, present day India, there is a pictograph language and social classes were believed to develop based on different sized houses. Some houses were bigger than others, thus making historians believe that some people were wealthier than others. They also had indoor plumbing, which was incredibly advanced for its time, and it was abandoned around 19th century BCE. Now the Shang civilization over in China, they developed along the Yellow River Valley. They had social classes and a strong military. Oracle bones were used to ask questions and then would be interpreted after they'd been hardened by fire. And the Olmec civilization in, in present-day Mexico focused on agriculture. They developed a calendar and the concept of zero and built these enormous stone heads of their, what we believe to be their leaders. Jumping down to the Chavin along the Andes Mountains in South America, they focused on agriculture and domesticated llamas and they had a very weak political structure. Now we have the emergence of states during this time and states are civilizations with a single political government and they emerged in Mesopotamia and the Nile River Valley. 
Rulers claimed to be divine, as I've mentioned a couple times, and they were supported by the upper classes. And large populations allowed states to expand and conquer other areas because they had soldiers and people willing to fight to expand their states. So some new weapons and transportation you should be familiar with. Many were introduced by pastoralists, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video. The composite bow was a stronger, smaller bow and arrow that, when combined with horses, allowed those who had these weapons to dominate militarily over other regions. Chariots were also used. They in increased the destructiveness of warfare. Iron weapons were much stronger than previous weapons. And again, those who possessed these three weapons and horses for that matter were able to dominate those that did not. So some architecture you should be familiar with. Ziggurats were located in Mesopotamia. And in the center, they had temples and altars that showed religious significance. Pyramids were developed in Egypt, built for pharaohs and served as tombs for the afterlife. And then some states built defensive walls, especially city-states in Mesopotamia, built them to fend off invasion. Okay, let's talk about religions. The Vedic religions were from 1500 to 500 BCE in India. They believed in many gods, and this was a precursor to Hinduism, which we'll talk more about in period two. Hebrew monotheism started out in Canaan, which is located in present-day Israel, Palestine, and Lebanon. It was founded by Abraham. It's monotheistic, meaning they believe in one God, and Moses introduced the Ten Commandments. And we'll talk about Judaism more in period two. Zoroastrianism was founded by Zarathustra, and this is a belief in one God and heaven and hell, and this was very popular in the Persian Empire, which we'll talk about in period two. And the Vestas were texts that were based on Zarathustra's beliefs. Now, the Bantu migrations were migrations from West Africa beginning in 3000 BCE located right around here and they would spread to different areas of Central and Southern Africa. Technology aided in their travel. They used canoes and iron tools to clear land. They tended to live in small villages. Some were agricultural, some were pastoralist, so there's not one set way for Bantu life. And they had a matrilineal society in which they traced their ancestry through the mother's side, not necessarily the father's side. This was a huge example of cultural diffusion. Wherever they went, they would spread goods and ideas. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Please check out all my key concept videos and my period reviews in 15 minutes. Best of luck this year. Thanks again for watching and have a good day.